guys so welcome back thanks for clicking so a christian convert who explained his biggest criticisms of islam and he quoted by saying muhammad is not a role model so what led to that let's check it out brother rashid what's your what's your biggest criticism of because uh, you were a, a muslim before and you converted what was your biggest reasoning for doing so mm. But my biggest reason, and I, I want to comment on a point that I forgot to comment last time. Uh, our brother, he said the 5% of Islam we are focusing on. Right. If you have this glass of water and you have 95 for it is water, but 5% is poison, it's going to kill you. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is exactly what we have with Islam. Yes, you can talk about God, you can talk about worshiping, but how about violence against people like me? How about violence against Christians and Jews? You are, you are ordered to wage war against them. That's what happened to my ancestors in Morocco. Berbers, they were Christians. Mm. They were executed. They were enslaved. That's what happened to people in Egypt, in Iraq, in Syria, mm. and even in Europe. How about that? How about um, uh, people who, uh, for example, uh, against women, Islam against women? And Women we should and note that they endorsed the death penalty for apostasy right here. Yeah. So let me just finish. As does Jesus and, Christ. And, and, and against saying. women, women should be beaten if they disobey their, their, their uh, husbands. Really? My mom was beaten, my imam dad. When I asked him why, wow. he said, it's in the Quran. You cannot object to that. They cannot object to it. It's in the Quran. It should be applied. It's a permission for men to no. beat his wife. It's in the Quran. It's the wow. word of Allah himself. No, 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 no. Uh, again, when I studied so the life of Muhammad, in 10 huh. years, he waged 83 wars in 10 <laughs> years, 27 wars and 56 raids in 10 years. And you are going to teach me that Islam is peaceful? No, it's not mm. peaceful. Are you going to give a Nobel Prize for somebody who waged 83 wars? No, you will not. And, and another thing, Muhammad is not a role model. Jesus is. Mm. Muhammad, he had many wives, 11 of them. Mm. One of them, she was nine years old. He was 53. I am 50. I cannot marry a girl that has nine years old. You cannot. Yeah, That's abuse. And Muhammad did that. Can we do one, so many one things. issue uh, let, me, let, let, one me, issue let me finish this. He took, he raided a Jewish tribe. He killed the whole family of a newly bride oh. called Safiya. And he took her as a wife the same time he was returning to Medina. Mm. Would you put that as a role model for me today in the 21st century? Mm -hmm. He had another wife called Rihanna. My daughter, her name is Rihanna. I named her specifically for that. He took a Jewish wife, Rihanna, and he he, he did sex with her, not with her will. He did against their wills, all these ladies. Are you going to put him as a role model? You cannot compare Jesus oh, with Muhammad. She, Jesus mean, never killed a person. That. He never killed an apostate. Huh. He never yeah. waged a war. So he was a role model for me. That's why I loved Muhammad and I wanted to follow Jesus. They are going to keep trying, bring the Old Testament. Name one person that Jesus killed because he was an apostate. Judas, he, he, he gave him to the Jews and he never ordered his, disciple, his disciples to kill him. I have people who just criticized Muhammad once mm. and he ordered his disciples to go and kill him. Even lying. His name is Kaab ibn al-Ashraf. He's a Jewish guy. They killed him. They lied to him. They took him and they killed him. He, he, he even encouraged a guy who was blind. He killed his wife. He had two kids and he killed her. He came to the prayer and he said, he said, uh, Muhammad praised the guy for killing his own wife just because she criticized Muhammad. So they, these are the rules that they want to apply today. If we criticize Muhammad, we should be killed. Like what happened with the Charlie Ibdu. Do you think those people, they just killed the, the people who drew the caricature for Muhammad just because of, uh, uh, like that? No, because it's written in, in, in Islam that they should kill people who criticize Muhammad. Mm. So Islam is a big problem. Even the 5% can kill whole humanity. Mm. 
can, can I have a response? Sure, I haven't please go for it, Jake. Um, and I want to comment on what he said and also Robert's, Robert's remark about us endorsing the pun uh, precise, punishment yeah. for apostasy. Yes, we do. Why? Because our claim is that we are actually faithful to our scriptures. You guys are not. Wow. You want to avoid the Old Testament, and I want to give you an analogy, uh, Patrick, because you're a business guy. You have many businesses, okay? And you have policies that you have to put in place based on social interaction in the workplace and all that kind of stuff. Now, you may make amendments to those policies based on new data, new information, how things are actually going based on uh, those things that you put in place. Now, when you do, right, and, and this is the analogy between the Old Testament and the New Testament, are you willing to say that, well, yeah, uh, thinking to myself, yeah, Pat, yeah, you were wrong, actually, when you said it was okay to do such and such. That was actually wrong, and you then put in the correct one. With the Bible, the problem that you have is the same one that you want to talk about, the loving Jesus Christ himself, which we also adore and respect as a prophet, is the same one that you believe is God and revealed the Old Testament, and you can't get out of that. So when your God, Jesus, revealed at that specific time, as I just read the passage, and I can read you plenty more where he says to kill babies in war. Is it okay to target infants in war and kill babies? Is that inherently immoral? The problem that you have is if you go on, and this is why the argument is so important, it's not a two quote just as a fallacious argument. It's checking for your consistency as a Christian, whether or not you're actually faithful to your own text and tradition. And the reality is you're not. Why? You have two options. If you condemn it as inherently immoral, then the whole Bible's gone. Because if you believe that those Bibles were, that those verses in the Bible were revealed by God, then you're saying that God is immoral. And on the other hand, if you say that it's not inherently immoral, but God changed the law at this time, then most of your arguments lose the force that they have against Islam because you can no longer argue that it is inherently immoral to punish an apostate by death and all of the other things that you want to tack on. This is why it's so important. It's not a fallacious argument, and the reality is we want to stick to our text and our tradition, and for for the most part, we would argue that the Christians have abandoned them in favor of secular, liberal, moral ideologies. Let me have let me have Daniel respond, and then I'll come to you. Go okay. for it. Yeah, so there are a lot of things that we need to respond to because he's just listing every grievance that he has against Islam. Right. We have to take it step by step. But just on this point of violence, you know, I think Jake makes really the crucial point. It's that Jesus, according to the Christian belief, Jesus is the God of the Old Testament. And he's the one who's commanding Moses, for example, to uh, ethnically cleanse the Canaanites or the Amalekites or all of these other tribes and to conduct conquests and war, to take girls as slaves, to take virgins as slaves. This is in the Old Testament, sure. So you have to deal, Christians have to deal with that moral problem. A lot of Christians, unfortunately, they just throw the Bible under the bus. And, That's you know, how is that saying. justified? But it's not just the Old Testament. It's also the New Testament. The New Testament also has endorses slavery. The New Testament also has the book of Revelation where Jesus is going to come, which, by the way, Muslims also believe that Jesus is, is the Messiah. He is the uh, born of the Virgin Mary, and he's going to come as the Messiah to establish God's kingdom on earth. Muslims also accept and believe that, and we're anticipating that. But he's going to be very violent. <laughs> It's going to be a very violent affair, and that's in the Muslim tradition, in the Hadith, and it's also in the book of Revelation. So Jesus is also very violent. And then finally, you have canon law. You have the church tradition. So if Robert wants to denounce canon law, because when you have canon law, it has slavery. It has a marriage age of 12 years old in canon law. It has um, punishments for blasphemy. It has even, um, you know, striking the wife, the disobedient wife. That's found in canon law from Gratian. So um, I believe that Robert is an Orthodox Christian. If he wants to denounce canon law and denounce his own tradition, he can denounce that. He can denounce uh, Jesus himself. He can denounce the Old Testament. He can denounce the Bible. Uh, the New Testament, that's fine. That's fine. He says that, oh, well, our religion adapts, our religion changes. But that's actually the problem, Patrick. You know, when we're talking about wokeism, when we're talking about like, if you can say that, oh, well, you know, that's the Old Testament is for those times. It's not applicable now, 
right? That's that's the argument. The violence, the killing, the killing of blasphemers. That's for old times. We've changed, but Muslims are not willing to change. I say, yeah, Muslims are willing to stand by revelation. The problem with a lot of Christians, not all Christians, a lot of Christians, Jews, Hindus, they all have these practices in their books. Buddhists, they all have these practices, and they're pressured to change and update. And so why, if you can get rid of the conquest and the violence and the punishment for apostasy, why not just get rid of the prohibition of like cross-dressing, the prohibition of homosexuality, the prohibition of drag queens? Why prohibit any of that? Like maybe times are different. Maybe we need to adopt drag queen story hour in our church. Maybe we need to adopt, you know, all of these woke practices. Why not? So if you like this clip and you want to watch another one, click right here. And if you want to watch the entire podcast, click right here. Wow. Like there are a lot of information I'm just getting to understand concerning Islam. The fact that Islam is allowed for you to beat your wife when she disobey husband. My God, I'm totally shocked to hear that. Like, how can you beat somebody you say you love, you cherish, no matter the mistake she does? All what you can do is to get angry, right? And when you, you, you can't control it, you just step out or you keep quiet or there's, there's a way to avoid violence there's a way and the one um the man also spoke about prophet Muhammad marrying a nine years old girl at the age of 50 something years what 50 something years my wow 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 and he said that you know um there were a lot of violence in the quran in which um prophet, prophet Muhammad is not a role model because he fought a lot of battles what this man is trying to say is that jesus never killed he never killed anybody during this time but he rather save life save souls you know set the captive free liberate people you know put smiles on their face do you want to talk about the five loaves of bread and two fishes in which Jesus provided during the wedding. That's one thing. You want to talk about how he cured the leper, the man that, that was leprous. You want to, there are a lot of signs and wonders. Jesus did. Jesus, you know, was a role model because he saved souls, he saved life. But most of the things I'm hearing now about Prophet Muhammad is that he fought wars, he fought battles, he married a young girl. The Islam, you know, when you talk bad about Prophet Muhammad, you are allowed to, you know, you know, punish the person in any way you want. Man, no, 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 no. That alone, dear, for me, I'm, ah, I'm not cool with it. I can't marry a, a man and just because I disobeyed you nobody is perfect just because something happened or i just disobeyed you and it's unconsciously or maybe consciously or unconsciously that does not mean you should beat your wife i want to say that and this one that they are using to proof or to counter the by uh, what that man said it's not to me it's not enough proof the other man said that in revelation jesus is going to come back to do this and that but jesus has not come back right and the other one was saying that uh, Jesus is God, Jesus is that in the Old Testament, that's Old Testament. In the New Testament, Jesus came to rewrite the wrongs. That's why he came on earth to cleanse every bad thing that have happened so that people can live without violence, without killings, and you know, people can live with love, love, unity, so that there will be love among Christians. And, you know, when Jesus came, Jesus proved it time over time that you need to show love to your neighbors, love your neighbor as yourself. That's what Jesus keeps preaching. He keeps preaching about God or because he doesn't want to be proud of, he, wants, he doesn't want to take the glory. So anytime they, they, they try to worship him or, or thank him, you say, no, give all glory to God because he is my father. So... I'm just speechless, like, hearing this about Islam alone, yeah, it's like, man, for me, it's a no-no, I, I, I'm not, ah, man, it's not easy, let me just, be, I'm speechless, let's leave it like that, thank you so much for watching, guys, I'll see you in the next one, bye.